Are you feeling stuck, lost, tired, or uninspired? We've all been there, including myself. I'm Coach Des, mindset motivator and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm here to tell you that the best, unapologetic, and limitless version of yourself is yet to come. The Born Unbreakable podcast is here to inspire just that. With motivating guests from all different walks of life and around the world, their stories will empower you to unlock abundance and your unbreakable spirit. Do you need accountability? Reach out to me for a free consultation of how I can support you in reaching your maximum potential. This episode is brought to you by Korma Date Coffee, the healthy alternative to coffee. This delicious date coffee has the health benefits of giving you natural energy, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Best of all, Korma is caffeine-free. No jitters, no anxiety, and no afternoon crash. Go to KormaCafe.com, that's K-O-R-M-A-C-A-F-E.com, and enter discount code BORNUNBREAKABLE at checkout to get 10% off your order. Welcome, everyone, back to the Born Unbreakable podcast. I hope you're coming back and you've listened to some previous episodes. And if not, and this happens to be your first time here as you were scrolling through the different podcasts you could listen to today, thank you for choosing this podcast. And you won't be disappointed because I have an incredible guest today. His name is JT Jester, and he is many things. One of my favorite things that JT is, is an adventure enthusiast. So we'll talk a little (laughs) bit more about his is thrill seeking, but he's also an author and a speaker, and his story uh, really moved me. It's why I wanted to have him on the show. Uh, he's he's the designer of a motivational series called No Bad Days, and he actually had some pretty tough adversity. Um, starting really early on in his life, so he actually spent two hundred and fifty days before the age of three in the hospital and had 16 surgeries before the age of 16, uh, which I, I'm sure people are listening thinking that, how is that even possible? Um, but today he shares his message of perseverance and of hope through the, the things that he's gone through uh, with the syndrome that he has called Vodder. Uh, so JT, first of all, I just want to thank you for being here, coming on the show, taking time out of your day. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to share my story and uh, and for your listeners to hear and and all of your amazing uh, uh, you know people that you've had on here. It's so incredible to hear what they uh, you know have have gone through and adversity and their stories as well. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, I was so moved by, by your story because, you know, oftentimes when we face adversity, which anybody listening to is raising their hand going, Oh, I've been through some things, but it is rare that it starts, you know, pretty much from, near birth. And for you, you face that because of this syndrome that you have called Vodder, that you you went through quite a bit of time in the hospital, um, having to work through all of that. So probably we should start with what this syndrome is, because people may not know. So so we might start (laughs) there. And then we can talk more about your experience (laughs) with it. Yeah, so a little bit of my life journey here has been uh, since birth, like you said, and I was born with something called a uh, Vader Vader syndrome, which is a birth defect that affects uh, your GI system, other organs, and other aspects too. So, at birth, I was born without an esophagus. I was born uh, without an anus. I was born um, in a very, very difficult time. That uh, they, if I was born a little bit earlier in life, it, it earlier on in years, you know, it probably would not have been a, a good. Um, I would not have been a happy ending, I'll call it. And I've been very blessed because of the doctors I've had. But a little bit about the the birth defect. Um, they, what I was born with is, is uh, tracheoesophageal fistulas in the esophagus, where they're basically endless pathways that uh, do not go to your stomach and 
um, and cause different problems in the, the esophagus. And then the GI system has no motility from the esophagus all the way down. Um, and at birth, this was an issue that had to be taken care of. And so the first couple of years of my life, I had a colostomy, um, which is, uh, something that attaches to your stomach and it's because I didn't have an anus to go to the bathroom. And so this, this device, uh, would, you know, collect things that, uh, my, my, uh, my way of, of going to the bathroom. And so this, uh, throughout the years, my medical, um, challenges continued. And so from the esophagus to the, uh, my, um, colon and different aspects of my intestinal system. And so these all add up on one end, but then as you grow older, uh, the syndrome has other birth defects that come along with it. And for me, I'm so blessed because I only have a few of them. And uh, some of them can be limb deformities or uh, heart problems um, and other aspects. Uh, and for me, I also had the spinal cord issues. I had two spinal cord surgeries from birth. Uh, I was born with what they call tethered spinal cord. And that is where your spinal cord attaches to your sacrum nerves. So they have to go in there and sever the spinal cord from the nerves as you grow because it causes a uh, different paralysis as you grow. And so around middle school to high school age was um, a very difficult time when it came to my back and my, uh, my gait, my walking, um, and had to have these surgeries performed. And they were, uh, I've been very blessed because as you had mentioned, I love adventure and I love getting out into nature. And um, throughout my life, that's been sort of a, a way of, of overcoming and, and, and finding a way to have peace and joy is by uh, getting out into the outdoors. And, and, and it was my escape goat from the medical stuff. But um, with that being said, all the medical things, you know, continue on and is something that I continue to monitor. I do a, uh, I've, like I said before, I have no motility from the esophagus all the way down. And so now I do a, 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 a treatment every day and I actually catheterize myself through my belly button and I put 500 cc's of a glorified enema that flushes out my intestines. And I do that daily, and it's about an hour long. And, uh, and it's a blessing because it's a, it, it truly it works for me and um, has, has been you know, something that has made my quality of life so much better is by having this port in the system and, and doing it this way. So um, medical has always been a challenge and stuff, but... I look at it as a blessing because in life, you know, it really put life into perspective for me and um, really made me understand the things that I'm so blessed to have and so fortunate for spending 200 and some days in a hospital, you know, and as a youngster and walking down the hall and, you know, looking into one bedroom or one uh, hospital room and saying to your dad at the time, dad, that kid's not as sick as me. You walk down a little farther and you look in and you're like, dad, that kid is as sick as me or sicker, much sicker. And a couple of days later, you walk down the same hall and you say, you know, dad, that kid is no longer here. And that kid is no longer here. Well, the first kid was no longer there because he was discharged. But the second kid and the third kid and whoever else may have passed away because of the medical challenges. And so, um, that's where, you know, it really puts life into perspective and has really uh, allowed me to uh, understand how blessed I am. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of the medical piece. <laughs> wow. Oh my but, gosh. That's, that's, that's but, I mean, uh, that, that's quite a bit though, JT. I mean, you know, yeah. One of the things that, that I have to ask, because, well, for one, it's incredible to hear that it could be even more severe than what you've described. Uh, like you mentioned, there's mm -hmm. other there's other things that could be associated with it that you didn't get with your condition, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, the other the other thing that I'm just curious about is pain 
Is there a, a pain level mm -hmm. that you have with different mm -hmm. things, either just on a daily basis or through the procedures yeah. that you've had? No, totally. I think, I think, you know, um, my pain tolerance, they, they say, and, and I, I believe it too, is probably a little higher than usual um, because of the medical things that I've had. Um, but uh, there's, it goes back to this, um, you know, one saying that I told my dad, actually, I was laying in a hospital bed after a back surgery and, uh, and in a lot of pain and discomfort. And he came to me and said, GT, I'm so sorry, you're going through this. And, and, you know, he's showing a lot of sympathy and really, you know, caring, obviously, is watching his son in, in pain and discomfort. And he said, he said, you know, I'm so sorry about this. And, and I said to him, Dad, it's okay, there's no bad days. There's only hard days. And we get through them because it's true. It's, you know, we, we all have our obstacles in life. And we all, um, you know, have those times in our life that, you know, we feel unbroken and, and we feel that we're, you know, can get through anything. But then when you get knocked down, it, it puts life into perspective sometimes and makes you realize that, you know what, this is a really challenging time, but I can get through this and I can move on and, and, uh, and, and do better and feel better and, and stuff. So um, that's sort of, you know, I think attitude is a huge part in life and um, having a great attitude and being able to motivate yourself to persevere and push on is super important. And it's not possible to do it just by yourself. You, you need, you need to have people in your life to help you do that. And I always say the most important thing is to surround yourself is, is something my grandma always said to me is, you know, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are is, and, and that goes in a lot of different meanings, but when it comes to being, having a good attitude, you know, show me your friends and show me their attitude and what they, you know, strive to do and, and it will help motivate you and push you on and, and they're your support team. They're there for you. Yeah, that is true. It's, it's a so, team effort. Life is a team effort, you know? It this is. is. This isn't a solo yeah. act, and and it's amazing to hear mm -hmm. to hear you say that. And your positivity is definitely, you know, very inspiring. So I have to ask um, about that moment that you had with your dad. Was that part of what inspired yeah. the No Bad Days brand? <laughs> and you know, it when, when yeah. you also and I, I forgot to mention too, you have also experienced dyslexia, but you were able mm -hmm. to to write a book. <laughs> so that's <laughs> I always joke. I say I'm the, the dyslexic kid that wrote a book, but uh, <laughs> so I did, I do struggle with dyslexia and I was blessed to be um, put into a program that really helped excel me into uh, becoming a reader and writer. And um, with that, I have written two books now. Um, my first book is Untether. And that book um, is a book about my life journey and is is the book that sort of drove me to doing the things that I'm doing now. And uh, and that is, you know, motivational speaking and getting out and uh, sharing my story as well as others' stories. And, and that's something that you're doing too. And I think it's so important because we learn from each other and we learn from each other's challenges. We learn from each other's accomplishments. And, and we, like you said before, we're, we're, we're all a team and we, uh, and working together is so important, but that first book drove me into doing this. And, and now I'm working on where you're, what you're talking about, which is the no bad days side of things. And that's my brand and as well as my new book that's coming out here in March. And that book will, uh, talk about others life journeys and how they've overcome adversity how kindness plays a role in our society and how how important it is as well as joy and how to find joy in any circumstance and uh and how to do that so it's been fun it's been really oh fun oh my gosh i <laughs> rarely have in the moment 
like tears <laughs> because I'm usually pretty good at like holding it together so I can make my way through, you know, these important conversations. But I, I just, I'm so moved because I, oh, I, 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 I knew your story and I, I, I had such a connection to it, but with you talking about what you have upcoming and just creating really what, what, a, what's a platform, you know, to share even more with your next book is, is just incredible because it's like you're, it's exponential, you know, it's, it's your story <laughs> and then you sharing even more. And, um, you know, I, I really just feel moved to say over the last few years, um, one of the predominant things that we see, whether it's on social media or in the news, is divisiveness and things that are in some ways feel intentional to push us into categories or to push us apart and pick a side and pick a corner. And um, that's been challenging for me, you know, mm -hmm. to, to see that. And one of the reasons why I'm passionate about my podcast and meeting people like you is because it reminds me that we're all threaded together by the types of experiences that we share. And despite how different it might appear that we are from our backgrounds to, you know, yeah. the way we grew up and maybe where we are in the world, there's so much that we actually share <laughs> together. Of course. You know, and, yeah. and I think that that's the beauty of our stories, like you said, mm -hmm. our stories that, that bring us together in our most vulnerable times and times where we can share in gratitude um, for the difficulties that we've faced and for how we, how, how we can get through things. So I'm, ju yeah. I'm just so grateful <laughs> that you're doing no, what it's you're so, doing. It's so well, it's so true. It's so true. We all are a lot more connected than we uh, see through the, like you said, the way different things uh, drive us to believe things. But we uh, we are all so blessed and and in so many ways. Um, and just finding that where what that is and what where that joy comes from in life, and being able to help others is so important. Mm -hmm. So I, I also am thinking about you being an adventure enthusiast and a thrill <laughs> seeker. So I have to dig into that a little bit more. What yeah. are the kinds of adventures that you enjoy and what are the so, kinds of things that you're looking forward to doing? Yeah. So I, in my first book, as well as my second book, it talks a lot about adventure and why it's important. I think we all have hobbies and passions in life that we find, and it's very important that we enjoy those. Um, and for me, like I said before, my passions and hobbies are pretty much anything in the outdoors and being out in nature has sort of been my way to connect with God, connect with uh, just myself and, and get past the no sayers in life and, and really uh, focus on myself. And so with that, I think for me, the some of the you know most valuable times have been on these adventures. And one of them um, that you may have uh, remember here is uh, one that I did a couple of years back. I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, and for myself with my medical stuff, this was something that I never thought would be possible because it's something that every day I have to do a medical procedure, and I need clean water. I need you know, the proper medicine, the, the proper everything. And so it was quite a journey to put this together. But in doing it, um, we, we did it and we accomplished our goal of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. And for me in life, I've had a lot of mentors, but one mentor in, uh, in particular really has taught me to have the passion for climbing, skiing, um, mountain biking and all the above when it comes to uh, outdoors. So um, that was one and, and uh, that I've done, and, but I've done some other fun adventures that uh, 
are physically demanding as well as uh, mentally demanding. And they've uh, just, every time I, do, I accomplish something, it's, it's just a, uh, another bucket list item and something that um, I can remember. So. Oh my God. How yeah. long did it take <laughs> to climb Mount So we, our goal. Yeah. So our goal was to do it in four days, um, to climb to the summit in four days, average is six to seven days. And so within doing this, um, the reason for our goal was first off to have a, a, a higher goal um, of accomplishing, but also because of the medical and, uh, and being able to have the right supplies. We could have done it longer, but it would have taken more arrangements and, uh, and more supplies. So getting off the mountain, you know, as quickly as possible was our goal. And so we did what they call Umbe route. And it's a route that is the fastest route up Kilimanjaro. And we started in the rainforest and you go from the rainforest through, uh, I think, seven different, uh, you know, um, different environments from rainforest to desert to alpine desert to um, Arctic. And it's pretty amazing just seeing the different things that God's created, but the nature has, has, is, has out there just from the monkeys to the, the uh, unbelievable uh, trees and things. And so it was quite an adventure. The first three days were, uh, were great and all went really well. And on the third night, reaching our camp at 16,000 feet, um, we uh, set up there. And this was the highest elevation I had ever been. Prior to this was 14,500 feet. And, uh, and so when we had reached this, um, typically when you get into an elevation higher than what you're used to, it, you could um, experience altitude sickness. And so I actually did start to experience some of that, um, but got it under control that night and went to bed and woke up to go to the summit the next morning at 4 a.m. And the night before I did my bowel management tr uh, treatment that I do every day. And so started our trek up and on our trek up, we were about two hours into it and we had crossed a, a section of glacier and this glacier, we had to use uh, ice tools to cross. And this time of year, which was October, typically there is no um, snow or ice in this section, but we did have some equipment to be prepared for it. So get, going across this, you know, 45 foot section of ice, you know, you're standing there and looking between your legs and uh, you see 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 feet of just sheer ice and then cliff, um, it, it made you really focus. And so we get across this ice section and the, uh, our guide, uh, Simon says, you know, guys, this was not expected and we will not, we cannot turn around anymore. We're, we're in this now. And so from there we continued up and about an hour later, I started to experience what I call a hot stomach. And it's whenever I get a bug, some sort of thing, you know, that just my stomach's not happy with. And unfortunately it started to cause me to get sick. And so altitude sickness quickly approached and hit me. And, um, and I remember just going up, you know, uh, these sheer rock cliffs on all four pretty much. And, and then finally, uh, getting to a point where you could see the summit and the adrenaline, the excitement, just the, the, even though you haven't made it there yet, but still the accomplishment came over the, my body. And so trekked on, made it to the summit. And, uh, it was an amazing experience that, uh, I will remember for the rest of my life. It's uh, truly, you know, it was challenging, unbelievably challenging because of this getting sick physically. I felt that, um, I was, you know, in, good shape for it, but the, the sickness caused it to be very hard. And then from there, the descend from there, uh, getting back down the mountain was, you know, very complicated to be well, not complicated, but it, it was definitely strenuous because of being sick. So, 
Yeah, but it was the, those are the adventures in my life that, um, again, go back to you know the medical, the different challenges in life. Um, they just allow me to escape and find my my true passion, which is being in the outdoors. Talk about being in the outdoors, JT. <laughs> that is definitely very much in the outdoors. How long do you stay at the summit? When you reach it. So we were there for about 30 minutes or so. Now you could stay there much longer, but um, because of our time schedule and things and trying to get off the mountain, um, it was definitely uh, just 30 30 minutes or so. So. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I can't, I mean, that is just such an incredible feat. You know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, many people have it on the list (laughs) of things to do. (laughs) Yeah, and it's uh, you know, um, it's it it's a pretty remarkable mountain, and it's really cool to see, you know, back to the people, um, and you know us, and you know it's a totally different culture, mm-hmm. but the culture is unbelievably kind and and so um, helpful and kind and and so determined to take care of. Uh, what God has created. And, um, one of our guides, uh, he was a remarkable guy and just unbelievable. He, he carried a bag up the mountain and it was a mesh bag. And, and, uh, it's my last story about Kilimanjaro, but, (laughs) but it's a pretty cool story. He is carrying this bag up and, and, uh, we would ask him, we were like, you know, why, why do you have this bag? You know, he's like, well, I'm picking up trash we didn't see any trash the whole way up. We're like, you know, you know, what, why does he have this bag? And uh, we get to the summit and we start to head down and we go down a different route. Now, like I said, the route we took is very, we, we passed maybe a handful of people on our path where on the way down, we passed groups of 30, 40, 50 people. And, uh, and it's very, you know, climbed mountain. Um, and so on the way down, it was it was disturbing and sad to see how uh, how much garbage and debris there was. And but to see you know him take care of his mountain and is what he said, this mountain is my livelihood and provides for my family, and I'm going to take care of it as well. And uh, and unfortunately, it's like that. But it is great to see that you know there are so many kind people out there that take care of things as well. Wow. If we only ha- all had, you know, that level of commitment, <laughs> how much cleaner yeah, and yeah. better of a world it would be. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. that's the cool, <laughs> that's the coolest story. How many, people were in, a, how many people were in your group? In our group? Yeah. So myself and, and two others. And then we had our, our two guides with us and wow. then uh, um, a team of porters that uh, brought supplies up. Uh, as well. So, oh my yeah. Goodness. So I think there's a total of uh, 10 of us That's with incredible. the porters and everything. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. <laughs> wow. That is so, but, uh, so awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that that's probably one of the neatest examples of adventure that I've ever that I've ever heard of. Um, <laughs> my, my sister used to work for the North Face and okay. so she got to meet yes. a lot of athletes um, that you know wear the brand and use the brand, um, uh, particularly with climbing. Um, and they, they have had a lot of really fascinating stories about climbs sure. um, that they would do. Yeah. Of, you know, mountains that I think we all see probably in books and on TV. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that you did that was really really cool. Um, but you know, I wanted to come back to your second book, and um, I know that you mentioned it's coming out in March. So, and and you know, just that no bad days, and you continuing to build your build your brand and tell your story and grow, you know, the the community around you. Um, tell me more about what you're excited about in 2022 with your book and everything yeah. you're doing. So I'm very excited about the book. Um, much more excited than the first book, and 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 it 
a different aspect is because I'm really excited about um, the stories that are in it and the individuals that are in it too. And for people to hear this. Um, but then I'm also excited because of I'm my goal and, 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 and is for this book to sort of motivate and push me into doing more public speaking and, uh, and being um, involved in more public speaking for schools, for churches, for whatever uh, aspect, it, you know, asks of me. And, and that's what I'm really um, excited about. That is so neat. So, so. when, when <laughs> the book comes out, where can we get mm -hmm. it? So jtjester.com, you can mm -hmm. pre-order it now, um, as well as uh, on Amazon, just under No Bad Days or JT Jester. Um, and those are areas that you'll be able to pick up the book, as well as Audible. Um, it, it, in March, we'll, we'll have the audio version out as well. So uh, for me with the dyslexia, audiobooks are my favorite. So it has to be on audio for me. <laughs> They're my favorite too. They're my favorite. Yeah. Too. I love listening to books. The aud Audible subscription is probably one of the best things that I ever did. Um, you can get through books fast. You can repeat things. You can, you know, yeah. um, refer back so easily and just go through your library. It's such an awesome app. <laughs> I love it. It is. It is. Um, okay, well, I, I definitely want to ask you a couple of questions that will help us get to know you yeah. a little bit better. So, you know, it being the start of a new year, like I just mentioned, um, and it's crazy to even say it out loud, 2022. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if it's because, you know, it's been warped speed since you know we've been in a pandemic and I don't I don't I'm not sure but but I'm like really 2022 I thought it was like 2018 five minutes ago um <laughs> but um one of the Time things does fly. It, it really does I mean it's, it's it feels literally like flying but one, one of the things that I always appreciate um in reflecting on a year and then really being in an intentional about a new year is choosing a word of intention. So I want to know mm -hmm. from you, if you had to choose a word of intention for the new year, what is it? Joy. Joy would be my word. Um, I think that that's uh, the reason I choose joy is uh, because I think that that's something in life that we need right now so much is, uh, is, is some joy because we have all been through a lot with, with, uh, with, with the pandemic and with other things in life and in society and, and, uh, and just finding your joy is really important at this time of year. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I feel that many people are are wanting more of that. So I think that's a great <laughs> that's a great word. Important. Okay. This is going to be really interesting because given that you've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, I'd love to know what is on your bucket list. Like what <laughs> is one yeah, of the so, things for you? So my my bucket list is pretty extensive. Um, there's a lot of stuff on there, but definitely more climbing. Um, I've, I just did this event, uh, a couple months ago, um, called 29,029, which is the elevation of Mount Everest, but you go in the States and you climb up and you take a chairlift down in a ski resort and you do it 13 times in 36 hours. And so I have a goal, um, of, of, you know, not this year, but it definitely to do that again. Um, I have a goal of doing, um, with the, I'm already signed up to do this one, um, but it's in August is it is called uh, rim to rim in the grand Canyon. And so it's a running uh, race from rim to rim from one side to the other. And then I'm also uh, doing a paddleboard event here in Michigan. And the paddleboard event will be, uh, um, 
61 miles of paddleboarding. And I did it this summer in two stints, um, one stint of like set 20 some miles or so, and another stint of 45 miles. So we know it's a doable. And, uh, and the group that I'm doing it with, um, we're, we're really planning to make this a big event this summer and uh, to be probably one of the, it will be um, in the States, at least the largest paddleboarding event. So really excited about that. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so that's sort of my bucket list right now, but uh, it grows every day. <laughs> oh my, okay. So I'm picturing this in my head because we're talking about water, land, yeah. and mountain. <laughs> like you're covering all yeah. of the terrain, <laughs> <laughs> which yes, is incredible. Yes. I'm like, is there anything, anything to that get you outside? <laughs> yeah, that's, but that is, and it, yeah. you know, it's um, one of the most incredible things is that even through now going on, you know, uh, two years or so of, of this uh, pandemic is the gift and, and maybe even more of the appreciation for the outdoors in terms of being able mm -hmm. to be in nature for and, a lot of people right and right yeah. and what it's done for our soul yeah you know what it's done for our mind what yeah. it's done for our body yeah it's awesome it's so true no you, you see more and more people you know choosing to go camping as opposed to you know going to the city or something like that for a vacation yeah. so it's yeah and and, and it, there's a there's a lot of reasons for that not just the um not just because of COVID, but also because, you know, people really do enjoy nature and it is an important aspect of our life mm -hmm. is to be exposed to it. So, yeah. I've, I've also yeah. had a few, a few, I've met a few people and I actually have a friend, her name's Nicole. Hi, Nicole Thomas, um, that have decided to sell their home and um, get an RV and do yeah, more yeah. on the road because their uh, lifestyle with their jobs and, and it just is conducive to where they're able to, to do that kind of thing on the road and essentially cool. have um, a different a different address or in a different state whenever they want, which <laughs> I think is really cool. amazing. I love that. Yes. I think that's super <laughs> cool. Okay. So another question that I have for you is, what is a self-limiting belief that you've had about yourself that you've had to overcome? Yeah. Um, I guess self-limiting um, belief that I had to overcome would be two, two that we've talked about, but uh, two that stand out very strongly to me would be the education piece. Um, you know, there was a time where, you know, I thought I'd never be able to read and write. And there was also a time that with the medical stuff, I never thought I'd be able to do the things that I love. And, um, and so I think both of those have, have definitely been something that I've had to overcome. Um, and I've been blessed with parents that have really pushed me to not even like see that sometimes and uh, that the medical gets in the way and really uh, pushed me to just be a, when I was younger and now, but when I was younger to just be a kid and, and, and let those things go away and, and just enjoy life. So, yeah, so I definitely say the medical and education were things that would have held me back um, mentally. So yeah. Well, and it's amazing because I'm I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of medical terms and different things that you've learned that you are explaining to other people because it is quite daunting. <laughs> um, you know, to, yeah. to 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 it's it's like another language, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, it's a it definitely is. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What about, what would you say is your superpower? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if I have a superpower, but I guess one of them would be I'm always smiling. So that's something I'm very uh, blessed to have is, is a smile every day. Yeah. 
I, it's so fascinating to you that you say that, um, you know, when I was, uh, studying you, of course, and seeing your different pictures, that is the first thing that I noticed about you <laughs> was your smile and, and how mm -hmm. much it says, you know, in it, because there's just such a genuine, um, like th there's a genuine gratitude and appreciation that comes through in your spy smile for life. And I think it's the kind of smile that we we all want to be able to emulate to to feel, you know, that way every day. And and I think it, it, it aligns yeah. so much with your brand of no bad days because it it like matches <laughs> very well. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I want to ask you what, if you had to give a piece of advice to my audience based on your life and mm -hmm. your experiences, what would you say that is? Piece of advice is uh, definitely finding your, your tribe, finding your team, finding the people that you surround yourself with and making sure that they're rock solid and, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't matter the size of your team or anything like that. It just matters that you have that person to lean on and, and for, for you to be that person to someone else as well. Yeah. And so definitely finding your tribe. Your grandma had it right. With that saying too, <laughs> about, you know, show yeah, me your yeah. friends and I'll show you who you are. I tell you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, um, it's also one of those things where I feel that it's more important now than ever to, to have, mm -hmm. uh, confidence, um, in who you surround yourself with and to, to do that gut check and that evaluation to make sure that there are people who are uplifting you and helping you to grow, you know, every day. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Who, so in your, in your <laughs> tribe, because in obviously, my tribe? yeah, you've had, you know, yeah. an, an amazing one, so, clearly what, you know, what are, what are some of the things for, that you can say about your own tribe? Yeah. Um, First and foremost is God, and second would be my parents. And then um, from there, I'd say I've, I've been blessed with amazing friends that, uh, you know, from day one are still my friends. And then, um, and then even you know, going on to college and things like that, finding new new groups of friends, and and that just we all mesh and get along and understand each other and and have. Uh, you know, empathy for each other and, and care for each other. And I think that that's sort of my tribe definitely starts, you know, um, within my house and my family and, and goes on from there. So that's amazing. Do you have siblings in JT? Yeah, I do not. So, so I'm very close with my cousins and, and they're, uh, they're part of my tribe too. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Definitely. Yeah. I, I can just tell even from the very first story that you told about your dad, that he's been like that. One yeah. of the great staples in your life, which I think is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so much. How can people, I mean, your, your story, like I said, is just so moving. Um, and I know people are listening and, and very excited about your book, but how, how can people, you know, reach you and connect with you to yeah. you know, keep up with what's so, going on? Totally. So obviously the books um, are on Amazon as well as my website, uh, jtjester.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then my social medias are all JT Jester Speaks, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, you know, all the above. It's uh, uh, YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel and things like that, too, are all on there. So um, easiest way is definitely the website, jtjester.com, and you can get connected to everything through there or Instagram. So nice, nice. That's amazing. And so. There, there could be people, because you mentioned this too, is part of something that you're looking forward to is speaking and just doing more of that and sharing your story. If people, yeah. you know, felt inspired by what you've said today and they do want to book you for something, is that something mm -hmm. they can do through your website as well? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. The website is a great way to do that. 
um, and 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 any other social media connects you to um, to that as well. So, any way that you track me down, you feel free to contact me. I love nice. uh, love talking and 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 talking to whoever. So. Cool. Well, I feel like people are going to want to <laughs> check out your social media just to see what water, land, or mountain <laughs> that you're adventuring in the near future. But I just want to thank you so much for your time. I know that you've got a busy well, schedule. Thank you. Um, this has just been so amazing. I'm, I'm, um, you know, this. I know it's such a busy time and. Uh, just me being able to take this time has definitely been the highlight of my day. So this has been so awesome, JT. Well, thank you for your time and for having me on and, uh, and for your podcast, because you are doing so much to help inspire others, help others, and, uh, and just encourage others. So keep up the great work and thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. J.T. Jester, such an incredible story of inspiration and hope and perseverance, and also just makes us think of how resilient we are in terms of getting out there and adventuring. That is one of the biggest things that I felt walking away from the episode is just how to fill our lives with more adventure. Doesn't have to be as grand perhaps as JT, or maybe it is. Maybe you are looking to climb Mount Kilimanjaro or Mount Everest or swim across a certain body of water. Uh, there's so many amazing things to do out there in nature. But what I will say is what JT has really showed us with his story is that with a positive attitude, you really can set a path for abundance and joy the word that he chose for the year. So I want to mention his book, uh, Untether, his first book, Inspiration for Living Free and Strong, No Matter What the Challenge. You can get that, like he mentioned, at jtjester.com. That's a J-E-S-T-E-R is the spelling of his last name, or you could get it on Amazon. I definitely want to listen to his upcoming book on Audible, No Bad Days, and it is one of those mindset shift books. I just love his brand. I love what he stands for, and I love the platform that he's built. So please follow JT. Tune in to the incredible things that he continues to do in the world, and also recognize the incredible person that you are and what you're capable of doing in the world, whether it's your next adventure or whether it's the decision that you need to make today, this week, this month. Do it with enthusiasm, do it with joy, and I wish you that today. If you are looking to give someone more joy today, share this episode with them. Let JT's story inspire them today. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Go ahead and rate and review. Also, if you haven't, I certainly appreciate you. Also, a shout out to Ava Media Productions. I always like throwing that in there sometimes because without Ava Media Productions, this podcast would not be sounding as good as it does. So thank you very much. And thank you to all of you. You are your only limit. So remember, take action today. Tune in again next time for another inspiring episode of the Born Unbreakable podcast.